Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to the second in our new monthly speaker series. This is the Coincidence Projects uh, speaker series event with founder of the project Bernard Beitman, MD. And the vision of the Coincidence Project is to illuminate the invisible currents that connect and unify us. We help to make what has been less visible, more visible. To some of us, it's already been visible and to others, they may not have been very aware of it yet, but will be or are beginning to be aware of things that are beyond maybe what we've typically talked about in society and culture in professions and psychology. And we're trying to normalize the discussion of meaningful coincidences, synchronicity and serendipity. We are a nonprofit organization and we're managed by a board. We have a number of our board members on the call here with us. Thank you to all of them for coming too. And as a nonprofit, we exist on a, a donation basis. So if you are able to make a donation at any time, um, we thank you very much and we would welcome that. I will put a link to do so in the chat just in case that's something um, that's possible for you and appeals to you. These events we keep free and open to the public. So there's no um, obligation. We want to make them as accessible as possible so that people can attend regardless of any need for um, payment. And our founder, Bernard Beitman, uh, many of you may know, he's the author of a 2022 book on meaningful coincidences, how and why synchronicity and serendipity happen. And I have been working with him since 2020. Uh, we've been friends for quite a bit longer than that and began working together in the community where we live, Charlottesville, Virginia. And he invited me in early 2020 to come on board and help figure out how to do something Jesus. with all of the experience he had for 20 years or more in um, studying co meaningful coincidences. If you're not yet on mute for those that are joining, uh, please mute yourself. It's much easier for us if, um, if everyone is on mute. We will have a chance for both breakouts where you can talk with a small group of folks to get to know a few others on the call later in the session. And we'll have some full group discussion at the end where you can ask questions and come off mute to add comments. And after practicing uh, psychiatry for many, many years, um, Dr. Beitman is now retired and able to focus on the study of meaningful coincidences. His successful podcast theories, Connecting with Coincidence, has around 200 episodes available. There's over 70 available on YouTube in video format or on Spotify or anywhere else that you might access podcasts on audio. And then there's an earlier series of the podcast where there's another 137 episodes available audio only. So if you look up Connecting with Coincidence, you can find the 2.0, uh, which began with the YouTube era. And you can find the earlier ones as well to listen on audio. And he's been able to interview um, many, many, many people from around the world that are in this field studying synchronicity, serendipity, meaningful coincidences in some form or fashion. There's all kinds of professions and people with different perspectives on that show. And it's a really wonderful way to get more uh, familiar with this field. And I guess I would just say that I learn every day something new on meaningful coincidences from from Dr. Beidman, and he has a wonderful way of trying to think about it in ways that break it down and make it as manageable and meaningful as possible so that we can understand the types of coincidences that occur and what we might do with them. And the purpose of today's talk to think a little bit more about how to cultivate more of them in your life. So, Without further ado, I am going to add a spotlight on Dr. Beitman so that everybody's able to see him. We have a few more people that have joined from the waiting room. I'll get them added in just a moment, and then we'll bring him off mute to begin our talk. All right, to you, Dr. Beitman. Thank you very much, Juliet. It's a pleasure to be with you. And 
I want to make sure you can see my slide. Can you? Um, Not yet. Just seeing you. You can also do the share screen. Which I did. Or okay, at this time I will do the share screen. Hello. Hello, if you're just joining us, please put yourself on mute. Dr. Beitman's about to share some slides. We'll get started with our main presentation today. And okay. we'll have people come off mute later in the day to ask questions and do discussion at the end. Um, ba, 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 um all right i'll share and you'll have to tell me when to advance um i'm sorry about that juliet I that's can't... all right that's why we have a backup it's not a problem oh I got, I got it 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 let's, let's try this um All right, there is it's it's on there now. Nope. I I started to share my own right when you said I got it, and I think my computer had already grabbed it. Uh, okay. Do you want to try one more time? If you're not successful, just let me do it, and you tell me to advance. You do it. You okay. do it. I've been playing around with it for too long. So you got it up there. Yeah, hang on just a moment. I'm going to make sure my backup is ready to go. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I think you've got it up there so that I do. Visible. I'm just getting a lot of pop ups from the waiting room at the same time. Let me start the slideshow version of this. And that's what I was getting to. Yeah. All right, it's loading. Thanks for your patience, everyone, while we work out our, our technical support here. Can you make that larger as well? It's as large on my screen as I'm able to make it. Okay, so uh, you gotta put me in the spotlight and then uh, we're on business. You're already on spotlight. Um, so it'll show the slides and then I think it shows you probably much smaller on the recording, but you're there, go for it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a discussion of cultivating meaningful coincidences. And Juliet, I'll just go bop and we'll switch, um, switch slides. Uh, we're talking here about how to how to increase meaningful coincidences, and probably the best way or one of the best ways to do that is to experience more synchronicities it's a it's a snowball effect that if you the more you do the more you'll see that's just the way it works and i can't tell you how many times i've heard people tell me that uh that the more the more i see the more i see and you can guess why and we'll talk about it a little bit as we go on but that's the first way to go on uh seeing more of them uh, as Juliet mentioned, we're trying to normalize meaningful coincidences as part of the coincidence project. Uh, synchronicities and serendipities are part of everyday life. And one of the weird things that is fun to say that the weird is common. Uh, 
uh, even uh, even statisticians who love to be able to tell us there's nothing right, there's nothing to to meaningful coincidences that's worth paying attention to, know that they happen a lot. And they have to happen a lot because they happen a lot because they're part of the many intersections we all have with each other in our lives and with our environment. So to increase them, I expect them, uh, enjoy them, that really helps. Uh, some of them are really funny uh, and they're very practical. Next. Go yet? Yeah. Noticing or meaningful? I, what, why cultivate them? Um, there we go. Thank you. Why cultivate them? Uh, because, well, they're amazing. I mean, there are people now uh, who tell me, yeah, I, I think of somebody and they call me and it's, 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 it's usually supposed to be a surprise, but it happens to them pretty regularly. So there are these, for some people, minor ones like the call, which is a common one, people contacting you when you didn't expect it, but then they do because you thought of them or somehow they were related. And keep in mind, this is evidence right here in our real life of telepathy. Oh, telepathy. Telepathy is real. Telepathy is real. We can connect with other people's minds. And telephone telepathy or thinking of someone and that person contacts you, that's part of a telepathic experience. Not always. Sometimes it's planned. Sometimes it's not. But it happens pretty regularly. And is evidence. One of the biggest uses of meaningful coincidences is they assure you that you are on your right path. I haven't used them that way, but a lot of people, generally, but a lot of people use coincidences as a way of saying, yes, I'm doing what I need to do. I'm in my right place. They're also very useful. Uh, sometimes you need money, an idea, information, and it shows up. Uh, being in the right place at the right time is a very common one, like sitting next to someone and uh, that person ends up helping you. And the happy accidents of serendipity uh, are useful throughout science as well as everyday life. Next. What is it about you that can help you become yet more tuned in to meaningful coincidences? Well, fundamental to this is the childhood thing that many of you still have is curiosity. Just what is this? What's going on around here? What can be happening? How do I understand this? How can I use this? Curiosity is fundamental. Uh, it occasionally kills the cat. We've heard that. You can be too curious. But when it comes to synchronicity, curiosity is a big, big help. It gets you to look further. It, maybe you like to do, which a lot of people I know like to do, is match patterns. This one looks like that one. Uh, there's a certain joy in being able to do that for, for many people. And that, if you've got that, uh, coincidences are pattern matching things. And they're not just about matching patterns. They're patterns of matching patterns. So match one pattern with another one, and you got another pattern. Openness. What is openness? to both your internal and external world, your internal world, your external world, making a smooth flow between the two. So if something happens out there, that has something to do with what's going in your mind. And there are various ways to make that happen, that fluidity happen. It, it really helps to be optimistic. Uh, it, there's evidence now from uh, Israeli uh, psychology group that shows that being ev the evidence is that if you're happy, optimistic, things are going to work out, you increase the likelihood of seeing more of them. Why is that? Because you're looking around, you're expecting things. And one of the things to expect that's positive is a meaningful coincidence. Also, there's evidence both from my research and the evidence from 
Israeli research is uh, if you're searching for meaning in your life, if you're looking around for a possible meaning, you're going to find more meaningful coincidences. Next. Well, okay, so you're looking around, you're curious, but there's no coincidence unless you notice it. Uh, you got to see the thing before you can make anything out of it, or even label it as a coincidence. For example, being in the right place at the right time. I don't know how many times each of you have been in the right place at the right time, but you didn't ask. You didn't ask. You didn't wonder. You didn't see if there was something there to be discovered for yourself. And that's sitting next to someone and getting a feeling that maybe it's it's something you should act on. Uh, the more you see them, as I mentioned, the more you will see. And that's because you're primed to see what's probably been there all the time. Now, I'm going to be mentioning this coincidence alert button. This is kind of like reprogramming yourself to have a little button in your head that says, bong, 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 bong. Pay attention. There's a coincidence happening. And you're, you're, mind recognizes a connection with your environment and this button goes off and you say oh some not, some sound i'd be curious to hear if you have any sound for me it's a kind of like pop oh, so pay attention gets your attention to pay attention to the possibility there's a connection between what's in your mind and what's outside of your mind a coincidence alert button it also helps to know the common meaningful coincidences of your life uh, and in other people's lives. Uh, and here's a, here's a list of some of them. Um, Juliet, please, next. Back one, please. Uh, the, the previous slide, Juliet, has uh, a list of uh, the four meaningful coincidences. Uh, I think we're both in the slides, so we're both doing advancing and not advancing. Somebody else is in the slides also advancing. That's not me. Um, uh, so you uh, want something after the four? Do you want this one? Yes, please. Okay. Somebody else Somebody else is advancing. Isn't that funny? Yeah, so if any other board members in the slides through the Google Drive, don't advance. Or Bernie, if don't advance, just let me do it. <laughs> yeah, so somehow it's doing it. Yeah, let's just do that one. Um, well, uh, hopefully we'll stay on this slide for a minute because this is what uh, uh, a basic way of dividing up um, meaningful coincidences. Some of you may wonder why I have a title, Meaningful Coincidences, there, uh, because there are four different kinds of meaningful coincidences, uh, synchronicity, serendipity, seriality, and simulpathity. And I, I was at dance the other day, and I was listening to some rhythm, and the rhythm went synchronicity, serendipity, seriality, simulpathity. They each have five syllables with an emphasis on the middle and last syllable. So you can get a little, a little mantra going with them, which I have in the past. Synchronicity is more about psychological and interpersonal events and experiences. Serendipity, those happy accidents of finding something valuable in an unexpected and unusual way. Seriality is strings of things, and the most reported one of those seriality ones is people seeing the 1111 uh, over and over and over again. I, I, that one keeps coming up for various reasons. And simulpathity, the experience of uh, feeling the pain of a loved one at a distance. Uh, I got started with that when my father was choking on his own blood, and I was simultaneously choking 3,000 miles away in a way that was uncontrollable. And many, many people have this experience. Remember, part of what we're doing here is not only trying to help you normalize meaningful coincidences, but also have you help other people normalize their meaningful experiences. Juliet? And if you want to know more about 
what those four me words mean and how to break them down into what I call mind and object, because mind and object are the fundamental building blocks of all these meaningful coincidences. But that's for another subject, another time. Julia? Now I'm going to ask you to rate in the chat um, your own coincidence sensitivity. Many of you have probably taken the weird coincidence survey, and one of us, the first question is on there. Uh, but when you put it in the chat, just put number one and, and say rare occasionally, sometimes often, or number two, the same thing. How frequently do you experience synchronicity and serendipity? So let's take a minute and please rate yourself in the chat. Well, keep keep doing that because uh, I I just like just I'd like to see uh, what you what each of you experience, and we can look at them later. But if this is to have all of you have some idea about your coincidence sensitivity, and uh, many of you are pretty sensitive, I can tell by the chat. So thank you for that. Next, Juliet. Maybe you have heard the term de-automatizing. Um, uh, it increases uh, meaningful coincidences because it's a way of taking you out of your normal way of doing things. Um, there's a part of the brain called the default mode network, which seems to keep us uh, on regular on our regularity. And drugs like um, psilocybin disrupt the functioning of this. Uh, this this part of the brain and seem to open up the mind, your mind, to new possibility. The default mode network holds us there, but it also restricts us. And so it's if the more you can loosen up the default mode network or de-automatize yourself, the more likely you're going to see uh, meaningful coincidences. And when you're doing that, uh, you want to be activating your observing self. That is your ability to observe your own thoughts and feelings and be open to that smooth flow between your mind and your uh, the objects in your environment. That smooth flow is like this happened. Am I, is it connected to something I've been thinking about? Uh, if you study new ideas like uh, like we're going to do in the breakout group, you're going to hear different people telling their own stories and and their own ideas about what we're talking about here. And that's going to help you think differently about your own coincidences. Meditation loosens up uh, your mind, allows you to observe your mind more easily. And there's, there are a lot of reports, and I think a little research to suggest they also are correlated with increasing meaningful coincidences and as i was suggesting uh alter your states of consciousness with whatever you use uh lots of ways to do it um and psychedelics are one but there are plenty other ways to do now keeping in mind that if you want to increase meaningful coincidences you can't stay in bed very well it's not going to do it because a coincidence is the coming together of two events. That's events in your mind, usually and events in your environment. So if you're going to, if you're going to increase them, you have to have more intersections between your mind and what's going on in your environment. So the more of these intersections you have, the more coincidences become possible. And that includes moving around in complex systems uh, like serving others. When you're serving others, uh, that's also tends to be outside the usual range of uh, the way people behave. And 
when you're doing that, you're meeting new people, you're getting new emotions, and you're going to be seeing more possibilities. That's why I think if you one way that you can be of service is to continue to join our activities with the coincidence project and tell other people about them and that's going to help increase the likelihood of coincidences for you and for uh for other people around you it'll help to know your personality traits um our research shows that spirituality um and being religious increase the likelihood of meaningful coincidences if you tend to see things in reg in regard to yourself um that is self refer things to going outside of you with to yourself you're more likely to see meaningful coincidences as well it makes sense because that's what we're talking about what's out there is relating to what's in you and intuition we're going to be talking about later uh it's a broad category and science is getting into looking at intuition. There's so much in there that we don't exact don't know very well. But each of us has an ability to get information in ways that uh, aren't from rationality, not from the five senses, but from some other way to be able to put things together, find new information, and again, searching for meaning in life. If you're looking around for meaning. Uh, you're more likely to find it and find it also through synchronicity. Next, next. There's this word, be open. Now, a lot of people say be open. It's a tricky thing. Um, you've got to have your mind fairly cleared. Uh, you've got to be paying attention to your own attention. You've got to be able to notice. And one of the key parts of making coincidences happen synchronicities and serendipities is you've got to act uh and that you'll you'll keep hearing that refrain from me if i had a song you would be the chorus is you said enough for you to be able to see them but often you got to do something you got to ask you got to move next And your context matters. Um, luck is when luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Um, that's one definition of it. But uh, another way to say it: the dog that trots about finds the bone. And I like to add: uh, if the dog trots about near a butcher shop, there's going to be a lot more bones to be found usually. And again, be prepared to act quickly uh, on that bone when you see it. It's got to be there to be acted upon not quite often and find a coincidence culture to discuss with others. And that's why we've created the Coincidence Cafe, a place where people can tell each other stories as we are going to do something like that today. Next. This de-automizing de happens under life stress. Uh, like the loss of a deeply loved person. Also need, um, when you energize a need, you're looking around and you're not thinking in your usual way, you're breaking the patterns. And there's no bigger breaker of, uh, of de-automization than romance. Uh, it's ro Romance just makes you think of eternity and forever. And it's, it's uh, this is going to go on and this is wonderful. And you don't see the realities necessarily around you. But a lot of coincidences happen about romance. And one of the problems that with romance is be people get married because of the coincidences, the synchronicities that happen with them. But uh, they don't work on the marriage. And you got to work on it. There is a honeymoon period. And after the honeymoon period, well, there's the work of the relationship. Uh, uh, what, if you have uh, trouble with partners, a partner who might be having difficulty with you, or you, you're going to look around for uh, more meaningful coincidences. If you need a job, uh, if your health is disturbed, those are places and situations that increase the likelihood of meaningful coincidences next now, I, one of the bigger ones for me was leaving the university of washington 
and I was reluctant to say goodbye to a colleague of mine. I thought we were competitors. We really weren't that much, but we were doing some of the same things. So I knocked on Wayne Caton's door, and there on his desk was a, a paper uh, on chest pain and panic disorder by two British authors named Bass and Wade. I only tell you that because it's a detail I love to say, but it doesn't mean anything to you. And that's one of the trouble with telling coincidence stories. We add more details that like Bass and Wade, you don't need to know that, but I like to say it. And that paper um, I asked him about, and he had a protocol, a one page protocol about how to look for uh, panic disorder in patients who presenting to primary care physicians with chest pain. And I, I said, can I have that? Uh, can I have that uh, piece of paper there, Wayne? Um, and uh, he gave it to me. And it ended up uh, as I went to the University of Washington, the University of Missouri, I got 40 papers uh, on chest pain and panic disorder, which vaulted me into being chairman of psychiatry and neurology for a little while. I didn't need the neurology, but just psychiatry. And that was because I knocked on the door and I saw something and I asked him about it. Uh, Jaworski was walking through O'Hare and he saw a woman that he really, that is Joseph Jaworski, that he somehow had a feeling about. And he went over to her. They were both getting on, ready to get on pl different planes. They started talking. They got married, stayed married for 19 years. And that was an example of a uh, synchronicity coming together where he acted quickly and 19 years was enough for both of them they both got a lot out of it but it doesn't mean it's forever uh, meaningful coincidences around romance do not mean forever and joseph jaworski's story is like that and and and, and, uh, and bissonette was a, a uva student um who was wandering through LaGuardia really fast, and she saw the woman she wanted to work with and couldn't have contacted her in any other way. She wouldn't answer the phone or emails. And she went up to her at in LaGuardia, and they started talking. She got the job. You've got to be able to act quickly. Coincidences are not just in your mind and in your environment. These are three examples where I'm trying to say, hey, you got to do something. And sometimes you got to do it very quickly. Next, please. My cousins are the Jaworskis. <laughs> I like that one. Um, finding a coincidence culture is essential. And so I thank you all for coming because what we're trying to do is create a coincidence culture that keeps expanding, where people recognize <clears throat> that meaningful coincidences are part <clears throat> of everyday life. And the Coincidence Cafe, if you haven't registered for that, uh, we can, Juliet can put that in the chat. Uh, if you have, please keep coming to the Coincidence Cafe. We want to involve more and more people, not only in being there, but helping to lead the Coincidence Cafe, because we want to get more people activated in understanding, talking about, experiencing, helping other people become part of this coincidence movement. Uh, and I was at a at a at a Passover dinner uh, seder uh, a couple of nights ago, and I started talking about uh, meaningful coincidences, and they kept popping up around the table. People telling me their stories. They wanted me to tell them. They want to tell their stories, and that one person recognized that if I if she told other people these stories, they would think she's crazy. They're not crazy. They're real. This is what's happening. This is what's happening out there. So let's tell each other about them. And then you'll get other people to tell you about theirs. Not all the time, but a lot of times. Uh, one of the key elements of coincidence discussions is that if it involves a second person, not just you, it's not all about you. It's about you and the other person. So it asks the other person what that person's experience of the coincidence is, the synchronicity is, the serendipity is that the two of you share. And please do get other opinions about a specific one. You're the one who's the final decider, uh, but talking and we're going to have some breakout sessions. You might tell some stories, but you want to have other people's 
you will have other people's opinions of what your story might be about. That'll help them sometimes too. Next, please. Now, believe it or not, <laughs> and if you look at my book, you go believe it. Uh, the coincidences aren't always wonderful for everybody uh, all the time. And there is a, this uh, myth that there's there uh, they are always good and they're not or they aren't necessarily at the beginning they can be at the end let if you follow them i've had some awful ones that turned out really well years later uh if one had failed if you'd followed your intuition and did something now and it really turned out to be bad what may have happened here now what have you been what did you miss and continuing to follow coincidence over time, and there's several examples and meaningful coincidences of how this reverse happens. And also keep in mind that a coincidence that's good for you may not be good for me. So you may have a great time with it. I might not. There was a geologist who saw a uh, top of a mountain in the uh, in the South Seas as having a, a, a likely having a, a very important mineral content. He could tell by the, the geography and the geology of it from a distance. A company came in and drilled up the stock, the top stuff off the top of the mountain and the company made money and this guy made money. But the people living in the villages below got hit with a lot of stuff coming down the mountain and partially destroyed their living situation. So it was good for one side of the coincidence, but the other side, the people who lived there, it was awful. And that's that happens. That coincidence for one is not necessarily great for somebody else. Next. Your intuition, your intuition. Uh, after I go down this intuition thing, we're going to break out into small groups and you're going to discuss, hopefully, intuition and meaningful coincidence as well as what what some of the other things we've been talking about. And I, div I divide intuition and there are books being written about intuition. I don't claim to be a, a, a scholar about intuition, just somebody who, who uses it a lot. Uh, there's gut the urge you feel it somewhere in your gut you, I, I that's one form that a lot of people refer to but I think that covers sometimes your heart has a feeling about what to do it's kind of uh, like that the gut is kind of uh, like that and your mind well your mind has sometimes this still small voice that comes in and tries to tell you something learning to distinguish which of those messages are the ones you should pay attention to learning that learning yourself learning the messages of your broad intuitive capacity which ones to listen to which ones to question which ones to ignore is part of what you have to be able to do to maximize your experience with meaningful coincidences so at this point juliet please divide us up into small groups and discuss whatever you wanted to discuss, but hopefully keep intuition part of that discussion. Okay, so in these breakout groups, you'll be with at least two other colleagues. You'll have 15 minutes total to, for a conversation. After 13 minutes, there'll be a little pop-up that gives you a two-minute countdown that gives you a heads up to wrap up. Try to make sure each person in the group has a chance to share something, and it might be on your own coincidence story that's occurred to you that you'd like to share the connection to intuition or some other idea that you have at this point as dr brightman said and when the pop-up comes with the two minute countdown there is a bright blue button that says rejoin the room that will take you away from your partners early but you can move it off their faces by clicking on white or gray space to move that two minute countdown away from your colleagues faces on your screen but not by clicking on the bright blue button that will take you back to us. Um, although we will be here and chat with you if you arrive back early. So you're gonna see an invitation to join the breakout rooms and please click on the blue button that says join.
seems to be being left here. I don't see a blue button to press join. Coming. Hi, Mark. Are you able to click accept if I send you to a breakout? Um, I, don't, I hope so. Okay. Let me try to. Okay. Gonna give you an invite here.
Hi, Annie. <laughs> you must have clicked the bright blue button. You've left your colleagues early. Hi, Krista. Hi, everyone. People will be returning from their rooms over the next 60 seconds, and then we'll get going back on the program again. So just hang tight. Nice to see you, Juliet. <laughs> Thanks. Good to see you, too, G. Are you still in Florida right now? Yes, in Miami. Yeah. Lovely. I bet the weather's good there. Oh, it's it's beautiful. I do not miss the cold of Montreal right now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. We'll have folks coming back in over the next 20 seconds. We'll get back to our program. Hello, oh, wow. everybody. Welcome back. I'm going to put the spotlight. Hang on just a sec. And I'm going to restart our recording. Give me just a moment, Bernie. Okay. Okay. We're, we're good. And I, you want me to go back to our slides now? Not yet. Um, I'd like to be able to... Um, <laughs> have some comments on uh, just outstanding comments from people uh, in their reports. We can't do everyone. And some of you may want to write in your, um, in, in the Slack, I mean, in the, uh, in the chat, uh, what, what went on with you, but let's, uh, let's, let's have some uh, responses here. Uh, Juliet has put in the, the Coincidence Cafe and there should, maybe there'll be a link there. Um, yep, and it's at the bottom. We encourage you to uh, become co-hosts in this um, as you become more regulars as part of the cafe, because we really have a lot of fun in there. And it's kind of like this. Uh, we kind of get to tell each other stories and you go, wow, some of these stories are just amazing that people are experiencing. So let's hear let's let's get some let's get some responses from uh, some of the others of you out there about uh, your discussions. And I'll I'll go back to talking more about intuition. It can help if you raise your hand. If you know how to do that in Zoom, you hover over the bottom. There's a menu bar. You can click on more and reactions. Under reactions, you can click raise hand. And that helps us to know who might be willing to open. I see Kazia. Kazia, please come off mute. Thank you. Anybody else that wants to raise your hand, please do so. And it'll show us in the order you raise your hand. Help us uh, have several people share now. Kazia. Hi, Juliet. Thank you. And Bernie, thank you so much for making the Coincidence Cafe. It was just what I was looking for. Uh, my partners were amazing. And I, I, I blame Kat for that. Kat <laughs> Windsor for that. The cafe. Kat Windsor, thank you so much. Um, yeah. Thank you, Mary Lynn. And also to um, to my other my other speaker, uh, Michelle. I really appreciated uh, meeting both of you. Um, I, I well, here's what I discovered. I have a coincidence journal that I keep. And I've been doing this for years with my a group of friends. What I discovered in both the other two women that were we joined, um, we both, we all three of us honor our coincidences. We don't take them as um, uh, what many of my family and friends do is, oh, that was just silly. I, I don't believe any of that stuff. Uh, it's, it's nothing. It was just a coincidence. And when I hear just a coincidence, um, that's my key for us. That's something important. So what we both, all three of us discovered was that we honor our coincidences and that we um, take them as a, a, I don't know, a little bit of magic, a little bit of a gift. 
And I love the fact that we have this place now that I know that we can come to talk about this. So I'm Kaja, I'm from Portland, Oregon, and I'm just glad to be here, thanks. Thank you. And if others would like to put where you're calling in from today in the chat, we would love to know where this group is, is located around the planet. It's lovely to see people in many, many locales joining us. Uh, Sue, I see your hand next and then surrender. If there's others that want to raise your hand, please do so. And Kazia, you can now uh, click again on reactions and a lower hand, and that'll take your hand back down. Thank you. Sue, please uh, come off mute. Hi. Uh Glad to be here from Pasadena, California. Um, we had a really nice group uh, with Surrender, who's, you know, I'll, I'll let him speak for his uh, experience, but we really enjoyed Surrender and uh, Magda and I, and uh, we all had different uh, uh, it, 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 kinds of coincidences to talk about. And uh, Surrender has had a lifetime of experiences with very deep coincidences that he calls miracles. And he'll tell you about that. Um, but it was wonderful to hear a uh, part of his life story. And uh, Magda um, is now very uh, early in her experiences. But she, you know, I had told a, a very minor little coincidence that uh, uh, has to do with sometimes I'll be prevented from doing something. And uh, I've learned to take stock about what something is, you know, it not allowing me to do of maybe that uh, I should try something else because sometimes when I'm prevented of doing something I find I really shouldn't have been doing it or it was not what I wanted uh so, but it was just a small kind of a, a thing to mention uh but uh it was interesting that Magda said she is looking for coincidences to be much more weighty than that and uh, I totally understand uh I've you know, sometimes it's the time limit of uh, these breakout rooms that you try to pick something that's going to be small to uh, explain quickly. Uh, but I did mention that I, you know, I have many things that actually have changed my life, but uh, that is she is pursuing looking at the uh, uh, more coincidences in her life, she will find them because as you get older, you get better at finding those coincidences and uh, identifying them and finding out what it really means for you. So everybody was really happy to have the discussion. And uh, it's always wonderful to, to be here with, uh, with, with this group. Thank you for having the Coincidence Cafe and the speakerships. Thank you, Sue. And you can click on reactions again to click lower hand and we'll move yeah. to Surrender. Uh, Surrender, welcome. Please come up on stage. I'm gonna add your spotlight. Good morning, and I, this is Surinder from California, Bay Area, Silicon Valley. And uh, again, uh, even before I begin, I must say it has been a very happy coincidence to meet Sue and Magda. <laughs> and uh, I was sharing that I used to use, and I still use that word, and I don't use coincidence as much in my vocabulary. So my life has been a chain of miracles and from I am aware of it from eight years of age. Mm. And now I'm 83. Mm. And uh, so I have lived just through the blessings of the divine. That's my faith. And uh, the things that the divine used me as an instrument to develop myself and to everyone around me I have a very good sense of accomplishment and gratitude. So uh, as a youngster from like 10, 12 years of age, I was the oldest of uh, four siblings and then five siblings. And I was always motivated, inspired to study myself and always help my siblings with their homework, with every subject. And I actually could help them with their home, their home homework until they did masters. And uh, half of them went to do PhD and have been very successful professionals and public servants. One of the things that uh, I'd like to be able to ask you to do, and thank you for your for your comments from California, um, 
that is sometimes there are coincidences that happen in the small group. I mean, we can tell we it's it, we can tell our each of our stories, but the coincidences that happen when you meet people is one of the most interesting and sometimes powerful thing that that you get randomly assigned to somebody and what happens. Uh, I got to experience. Uh, uh, a an experience of a whale with the person I was one of the people I was with 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 Matthew and uh, with Bruce uh, and so I could identify some with that for various reasons so have any did any of you have any um, coincidences with each other in your small groups well, thank you surrender I have Kat and then Michelle queued up and you can click on lower hand or raise hand, especially if you want to respond to Bernie's new question about coincidences that were arising in the group. Yeah, yeah, so it was super fun to, to meet my two, uh, you know, little breakout mates and and immediately the birds showed up. <laughs> the, the, the magpies and the, um, the cardinals and the hummingbirds showed up like for all three of us and it was just so fun to see the birds again the birds again yeah. it's the common theme in this world of coincidences thank you kat and um now michelle hi thank you i think i can speak to something that happened not necessarily a coincidence between the three of us but something that happened an aha moment for me sharing with the two of them. And so there were two things. One, I, I spoke to one of the most important things I learned from Bernie in this whole process since I met him was that coincidences and synchronicities happen more outside the comfort zone. And that was my biggest takeaway. And then when I was talking to them about how I got involved, which was through CAT, and they asked me when, CAT, and I couldn't remember if it was 2020, or 2021, I couldn't remember. But I did remember that I was struggling with the fact that after 2020, I felt that there were less or fewer coincidences in my life. And I felt like what happened? Some of the magic is, is missing. And I realized that what happened in 2020 is I started traveling a lot less. I stayed home. I My world became smaller. And with my smaller world, fewer chances for synchronicities and coincidences. So when Bernie told me that they happened outside the comfort zone, it made sense. And I think that really got locked in in my conversation just now as I put those two together. <laughs> but it felt like synchronicity stopped happening, but in reality, I stopped going outside. I stopped having as much of a dialogue with the world. And so what it's done is it's pushed me to go out more, to interact and to um, step out of my comfort zone, knowing that I'm giving the the giving life more opportunities to surprise me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Michelle. You can lower your hand, and I'll take off the spotlight. And Bernie, do you want to turn back to your slides now? That was the last of our hands. Good. We'll do that. Okay. Give me just a moment. Go. Uh Now, one of the uh, most important things that I can convey to you, it may be um, difficult and also welcoming to you, is that we each walk through this life with a different filter on how we experience synchronicity and serendipity. We have different filters. And my filter is, is based on having played a lot of sports, having had a very early meaningful coincidence as my dog got lost, I got lost, we found each other. That was very meaningful to me. I, I loved that guy and I needed him uh, particularly then. And I, I became a physician, which means diagnosis, which means putting things in patterns. And I became uh, a psychotherapist, which meant I like to watch processes uh, unfold. So these things have informed my way of doing and experiencing meaningful coincidences. But what I realized recently is that my basic 
underlying pattern. And I'm asking each of you to be able to think about yours. And one of the ways you can do that is write down a lot of your meaningful coincidences, write them down so you can look back. Mine are more on the operational side of things. It's not so much spiritual, although it's in there. It's like this happened and then I need to be able to go on to the next thing. It's, I'm like a monkey uh, swinging from vine to vine in the synchronicity forest. Uh, I'm swinging. I like to think like Tarzan too, swinging from one from the next and grabbing the next vine and believing there's going to be a next vine there to grab and then swing on that vine and go to the next level. Uh, there, there's no better example of that than uh, going to uh, an improv thing where I uh, was invited to do uh, part of an improv uh, presentation, a uh, competition with five other groups. And that's where I met Juliet Trail. And having not done that and then kept contact with Juliet, we would not be sitting here today. So uh, Juliet was a trail through the coincidence jungle for me. It's the way I move. And I'm asking you to think as uh, talking with Bruce about the whales today, what are your basic underlying like, ways of experiencing uh, meaningful coincidences? One of them that came to me as part of this um, swinging from vine to vine is uh, inner GPS. And we're going to be hearing a, a talk from Michelle Kempton and Katrin Windsor uh, in a couple of months as part of this monthly speaker series. We're going to be hearing about their, their take on inner GPS, which is getting to the where you need to be without knowing how you got there. And I mean, knowing rationally how you got mm -hmm. there. And when one of the... Uh, best examples I have is this in, in, in meaningful coincidences is like this, this teenage girl is out with a gun in her hand um, by a lake in a forest thinking about committing suicide. And as she's thinking about it, her brother drives up next to her and she says, what are you doing here? And he says, I don't know, but I felt like I needed to be here. And, so she lived long enough, she's still alive, to tell me this story. He got to where he needed to be to help her without knowing, even having been there. He'd never been there before, and he still got there. We have capacities that are what we call under the term intuition that are far greater than we're told we're able to have and use. And that's, that's a great message, I think, I have for you. You need to also recognize the influences that interfere with your intuitive accuracy. Um, being anxious and worried, distractful and fearful, don't allow you to listen to your inner voice, your heart and your gut very clearly because literally there's a lot of static. Inner communication needs to be allowed access free to your self-observer. You need to be able to have the information come clean to your observer of yourself and be able to analyze it or not and put it away or put it or think about it now or actually act on it. Next, please. So you can practice your intuition, um, practice decision making in ambiguous circumstances. Um, you, you can say, well, should I do this or should I follow your intuition and see what happens? And you need to learn to be of two minds because intuition on its own can run rampant. I describe in some detail in meaningful coincidences, the need for balance between intuition and rationality. Rationality is not all bad. Intuition is not all over the place. If you pull them two together, then you're able to get the balance that we look for in yin and yang in all kinds of ways. And one of the basic fundamental realities of us here living on this planet is polarity. We live with polarity. It's all over us. 
And some people want to go yes or this one or that one, no. And there's usually a connection between the yes and the no. So there's polarizing, continue, the pol there are polars, polarities, and there's a continuum. And to be able to think in polarities, yes and no, and the in-betweens at the same time, the continuum and the opposites at the same time is a mental exercise that meaningful coincidences can help us have. And of course, when you have a clear intention, you've heard many times, I'll say it again, it's a good idea not to hold it tightly. It's you need to let it go, hold on to it and let it go. Juliet? When you feel the urge to do something different or go this way or that, um, examine and perhaps follow that urge. You want to be able to learn yourself which messages are the ones to listen to and which are the ones you shouldn't listen to and which are the ones you got to like, well, I'm not so sure. Try to determine which urges, feelings, and voices are associated with positive, negative, and neutral outcomes, remembering that sometimes what happens immediately uh, could be good and turn out to be bad, and what happens immediately that turns out to be bad may turn out to be positive later. Next, please. And here's that old coincidence, <laughs> coincidence alert button. Uh, in the chat, um, <laughs> I'm new to coincidence, the group, why do coincidences happen? Okay. Well, that, that one's a fundamental question. Uh, please take a look at my book and get some idea about that. Um, why do they happen? Well, they happen. And the why is, um, is all over the place. There's a lot of different reasons for them. And I'm not talking about um, explanations today uh, because there are so many of them. And each of you may have your own favorite explanations. Quantum mechanics is a real favorite. And I have my doubts about it. It's a, it's a very a, appealing set of analogies between two particles that are somehow put together. They're entangled and you separate them and change one and the other one changes immediately it's it looks like what's happening here in the larger frame but i have some different ideas about it but so do you and you'll find your different ideas and i don't try to argue with people uh i try to discuss it with people about <laughs> what the potentials are but my main effort emphasis on what causes meaningful coincidences is you you it's not just god or rational or or reason or, or or statistics or random not god or random there's both of them are in there but you have agency and figuring out your own agency and creating them is so important and part of creating that agency is is being able to recognize that you have a coincidence alert button potentially to develop with you. I, I'd like to hear what you think about this button, because I think I, I like it. It's like, boop, it, it goes on uh, somehow. And then it can be activated when a coincidence appears, uh, triggering a shift of your attention to the coincidence evaluation. And then your mind can quickly examine the similarity between the mental and the environmental event. And uh, then the emotional charge and decide whether or not it's useful to you. One of the uh, key ideas is what is meaning? What do you mean by meaning? And uh, there are many different meanings of meaning. And the two primary ones with coincidences are what it means to you personally, how it can be fit with your life narrative, and also what it tells us about how reality works. Because that's why I, one of the reasons I'm interested in, because there are clues to the mysterious that is hiding in plain sight. They tell us something about how reality works. But how do you, how do you develop your own meaning structure? What do they mean to you? Personally, is probably the most important part of this, and your part in play, in creating them is very much a part of that. Next, please.
I keep emphasizing this because it's so important to discern the inner, the usefulness of these inner urges. You can do it by guessing who's calling or texting or noticing a feeling that you might be running into someone pretty soon. I, I do that sometimes. I get a feeling like somebody's going to show up at dance I haven't seen for a while, and there they are. Uh, someone who's coming to the door, who might that be? Then examine the quality of the feeling, that is the gut feeling, the heart feeling, or the mind information, That see how accurate that is, and see if you can re-identify that when it comes up again. Notice a little feeling when you sit down next to someone. Could there be a latent, meaningful coincidence between the two of you? Should you begin a conversation? Sometimes you can begin those conversations and you hear somebody's life stories and get, they go on and on and on, and that'll happen. But sometimes you find a way that that life story connects with you, and there may be something there for each of you if you ask, if you start. Without asking, again, without asking, many coincidences disappear into possibility, into potential, without their being realized. Next, please. Your still small voice. Um, do any of you hear your own still small voice? Please raise your hand or say something in the chat. Do you hear your still small voice? A whisper? Uh, tell you that do you stop and let that feeling thought enter your consciousness? Oh, yes. Several people do. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, that's the sort of thing that I want to be able to have us discuss in the Coincidence Cafe. Uh, the usefulness of that whisper, what it sounds like to you. It's as much as I draw categories and I say, this is what the field of meaningful coincidence looks like. There's so many variations that have to do with your own life upbringing, your own experiences, and your own way of using your own intuition. And we need to keep comparing notes with each other about intuition and ideas like the still small voice that you may hear. Some people hear it a lot. Uh, some people may be tuned into this idea at, that it's a, a new idea, that you haven't thought about it before. And that's the range of experiences we have with meaningful coincidences. A lot of people experience a lot of them, a lot of people experience very few of them, and a lot in between, and the still small voice, I think is a really important one. And here's another question. When you hear the still small voice, does it seem like it's coming from inside of you or outside of you? In the chat, you can please respond with that. Inside of you or outside of you? <laughs> kind of both, huh? <laughs> it, there's a lot of different both inside and outside. Uh, and yeah, nature is another way to get them for sure, Lisa. And uh, it's a, uh, I don't hear, I see a flash of still picture in my head. That's good. We've got to do, we got to get the visual in here. It's not all words. Uh, it's the, it, the visual is very important to bring up. Um, so my, one one time I had a voice and I, I and I and I, I it did come from the outside I thought of me um, and I said what I said why and the voice said you'll see and I have seen since then a lot a lot has happened because I followed that voice I, I told me to go left instead of right uh, so the, how many of you challenge the the voice that you hear and say see if you can uh, who are you where are you coming from or just as I said, is why should I go left instead of right? We've had arguments. <laughs> yes. That's, I like those arguments when, but usually just listen.
<laughs> well, it's worthwhile challenging that voice just to see where it's coming from and what it might mean to you so that if that what it means to you and how to listen to it. Uh, some of you have direct connection and believe it. Uh, some of you uh, question it. Some of you think comes from the inside and outside. And the inside outside question is kind of a tricky one because where do you end and the rest of what's around us begins is uh, part of the fun of figuring out what coincidences are because we are much, we are part of something greater. And what we show with meaningful coincidences has how we are connected with each other. We are part of something. I call it the psychosphere. Other people have different words for it, our mental atmosphere. I describe that in meaningful coincidences. It's my view of it. And it's the way I've experienced the world. So we've mentioned telepathy and clairvoyance in the past. Um, and I'm just here to say, ladies and gentlemen, trust your intuition because you've got telepathy, clairvoyance, and precognition running around in there, and you've got to be able to think that this, these, in, this information is uh, is can be valid to you. Not always can be valid to you, uh, and it's it's. The more you hear about it, the more normal they'll be. And integrating coincidences in your life, expect the unexpected. Times they increase and decrease, try to explain them. We heard some of that. If you're not intersecting with others, it won't happen. And keep in mind, weird coincidences, weird events, synchronicities and serendipities are very, very common. So, Juliet, let's end it there. And I thank you very much. And we have a little time for some more discussion uh, as a group. And um, let's do that. And Juliet, do you have any comment before we do that? Well, thanks to everybody who was able to participate in the chat. It's really great when we have a higher number. It's hard to get a lot of people um, off mute, but the chat is a really great way to keep it hopping like this. We will have Coincidence Cafe one week from today at the same time as today's session. The speaker series will not always be at this date and time. We will shift it to some other times as well and days of the week in order to help capture different colleagues around the world in different time zones. And so just stay tuned for that. Uh, you'll all be on our email list for the coincidence project. And so we'll be sending out um, notifications uh, no more than twice a month from the coincidence project, particularly drawing attention to major news and announcements and to our upcoming events. Uh, we've got three more minutes with the regular program for today. Um, We've got Mary Lynn Hind and also Kirby with their hands raised to, to come off mute. For those of you that need to log off right on time, we want to thank you for being with us today. And if anyone else wants to raise their hand to add a comment here at the end, please do so. We will be uh, continuing with both Coincidence Cafe. Focus there is really on a lot of interaction and speaker series where the focus is a little more time for our presenters to kind of go deep into their knowledge and expertise. Uh, a number of members of our board and other experts that we call our coincidence allies will be part of speaker series coming up over the next year. And they just have a wealth of different areas of specialization and um, insight and thoughtfulness. So we really welcome you all back at many of our events. Mary Lynn, to you, come off mute. Hi, I, I'm just so excited to share this one thing that I, we talked about in our breakout group as well about how I get information. It's kind of like I have two mailboxes in my head. One is information that's not mine to keep. It's just like I get it and I have to share it. I write it down, I give it to somebody, I share it with a group, whatever, an idea, a thought. And then the other side is stuff for me. And I've really learned what to keep. And it's like, okay, that stays in the mailbox in my head. And this is like the express, it just goes out. And I've learned and understood and embraced the fact that there are times that things come to me that I'm really supposed to share and they're not intended for me. And um, I love that. 
That's it. Thank you, Mary Lynn. And uh, Kirby, how about you? How are you doing, Juliet? Um, Bernie, when um, you had talked about, um, you know, motion that I was thinking about a book, which I read a long time ago. And then um, like I was surprised when you told me that this guy was a colleague, um, James Austin um, Chase Chance and uh, Creativities. When um, you had talked about motion and stuff, I was thinking about him. And I think that's where Bernie picked up one of his all time favorite phrases is in that chapter where I think that chapter opens with the quote, the dog that trots about finds the bone. Yep. And it turned out by coincidence, both Bernie and I have connections directly to James Austin, who wrote that book. He's now over 100 years old, just released his most recent book in the past two years. He's still going strong. So he's a meditator. Uh, who credits meditation with his very long, healthy life. And I wonder if coincidence might also be very healthy and good for us to stay in that intuitive channel may actually contribute so positively to our well-being. It may help us thrive into later life, you know, and, and live healthy, longer lives, perhaps. Maybe science, as we get more research going with the Coincidence Project, we may be able to look into this the new paper by Pninit Russo Netzer about um, synchronicity and making meaning points to meaning making and our sense of purpose and our well being are all linked, and synchronicity contributes to our sense of meaning and purpose. So I think it's going to therefore be something that contributes to our well being. So hopefully, our project can help to bring this even more into light and to create research that helps to back this up. Some of us already know this intuitively. This already feels right to us. And there's some of us where it feeling right's enough. But there are many other people in our world that are more of a logical, rational, materialistic point of view, and they would like to see some evidence. The good news is our science is advancing more, and we are accruing that evidence to back up this kind of intuitive feeling that many of us have, that this is all very wonderful to us, you know, a balm to the spirit, so to speak. And thank you to those that might need to log off. We'll probably stay on for a few more minutes if there are some of you that want to stay on a little longer. I think, um, Bernie, any closing words? Uh, no, um, and yes and no and yes and no. Um, just please keep coming to the Coincidence Cafe and remember that we're going to be having these these monthly speaker series uh, that we'll all keep learning from because the idea is to keep creating uh, a bigger and bigger consciousness about meaningful coincidences in the psychosphere. We're creating our own psychospheric uh, mentality mind mm -hmm. in this way of doing the meaningful coincidences in the cafe and the coincidence project itself. And so we want to keep it being strong, fundamentally strong with return people, with continuing to evolve ideas and get the idea of meaningful coincidence out there. Why? Because I'm pretty sure synchronicity can be of some assistance in helping change the way the world is currently functioning. Once we have people experiencing lots of them, I think they're going to see that much more interconnected we are and how we all participate and make this place a better place than we are doing now. Thank you. All right. I think I'm going to just go ahead and stop our recording from this session. And this will eventually be posted on our events archive. We'll be building a new section of our website for this now that we have events to archive. And uh, we'll still stay on for some conversation more casually.